So, g'day comrades subscribers. Uh, we're at 7.45, January 2nd, 2023. Thanks for hanging around. Um, if I have a quick look at this, don't know if it works. Uh, Vic 1011A RS232 um, interface cartridge. So another one of these things that looks, oh, that looks interesting. Don't know if there's any of any use these days. Um, so yeah, well, I don't even know if it works, so we'll have a look. Um, got it with the, uh, not bad instructions actually. Oh, sorry, yeah, I know that's flashing, isn't it? That's flickering. Sorry about that. Um, I assume that this is somewhere online. If not, I'll scan it in. Um, but I'm pretty sure this sort of Commodore stuff has been um, well and truly uh, archived. So I guess it's mainly for communication, not so much for serial printers. Because um, I did have a think that, you know, maybe you could do a listing, um, a listing to the serial port uh, as if it was a printer but I'm not uh, I'm not sure so it includes this simple basic program this program sends and receives data to from a silent 700 terminal modified for pet ASCII okay I don't have one of those um, TI silent 700 setup is 300 board 7 bit ASCII mark parity what's mark is that even even parity and full duplex. So I know I know I pronounce duplex wrong. That's what I do. Um, blah blah blah. So it mentions Vic term terminal em emulator that you can load. It's got the Commodore information network that you can get on get online. Uh, but but but. So I'm just running what the maximum speed, I assume it's 300 board. Uh, -da -da. Yeah, anyway, so that's, that's the documentation. Uh, signal on the VIC-20 and that of the user port are zero, zero volts squiggly plus five volts TTL level. These signals are converted into those at minus nine volts, plus minus three volts, okay. And plus nine volts, plus minus three volt level by the RF. So it's converted to nine volts instead of 12. Well, that does give three three volt. I thought RS232 was 12 volts. That's interesting. Maybe I won't hook this up to my Mac. Anyway, let's pull it apart and have a look. Okay. So this goes in the user port, of course. Um, okay, looks like there's probably clips down there, right? Clips in the corners. I never know which way these clips go. There we go. Gently, gently, gently. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Top shell. Here we go. Made in Japan. Copyright 1981, Rev A. Oh, everyone's going to copy this now, aren't they? No, no, no. No, no, no looking, no looking, no, no. <laughs> right. Oh, my loop's upstairs. I'm going to have a look. So, what do we got? Oh, I can't read this. <laughs> I need to go get my loop. Uh, so, uh, not entirely sure. All right, I'm going to, rather than just rambling on not having a clue what I'm talking Oh, that looks a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Oh, sorry, probably going to have a close up. Oh, what the hell's going on there? But, um, yeah, certainly space for 
different options, I guess. Here, U1, U2. Okay, we've got ground labeled here. VCC there. C5. All right, I'll um, I'll go have a look what these ICs are. Is this an inductor? Is that an inductor? I've never really been sure. Okay. All right, I'm just going to check what these parts are. Okay. So I've cleaned up a bit here. There seems to be uh, some sort of option for pin 3, which is read data. But, um, yeah, so we've got a 7404, which is um, hex not gates. We've got HD75189P, which is a quad differential line driver with tri-state outputs. And an SN75188N, which is um, quad RS232 line driver or something. Um, but, yeah, so what interests me also is that the you've got these... Um, you got a transistor. I think that's a transformer. That's a transformer, isn't it? It's got this label as TI or T1. Anyway, and you've got these, for example, you've got a transistor here that's missing. You've got some resistors here that are missing. And obviously, you've got these options here that, you know, make or break um, these links here. So, reading the documentation again. Um, sorry if this is going to. Reading the top, it says that um, that there's a VIC 1011B current loop uh, type. So a limited number of blah, blah, blah. So I'm thinking, so down here it is, <coughs> these pins here. I'm thinking that's probably what this is. It's probably, you know, so they can reuse the board, make and break the links as required for this other type of board. So, yeah. There we go. Um, like I said, I don't think this is particularly rare or interesting or whatever, So, but I've, I've got it, so I thought I'd just have a quick look at it. Um, and so I don't know if it works. Uh, I'll put it back together. Um, so I'm not too sure about... Um, ...connecting it up to my Mac. I think that'll be part two, because I've got some other things I want to do as well today. Let me just get tidied up a bit. All right, so here's my quick setup. Got it in the expansion port, nothing connected. I, I remembered that uh, Penultimate has actually got Vic term. So let me just set up the camera properly. Okay, so I did try via um, Chris's VGA adapter, but uh, nothing. No, there's no output. So anyway, so if you go to utilities. There, we've got a big turn there. Uh, <laughs> but as you can see, because I'm using a Jap Japanese. Um, Vic 1001 with a different character set. It's um, yeah. It's all in katakana. But you can see, we'll go up here, that um, it apparently does allow up to 2400 board. So that's interesting. So if I'm going to continue, if I'm going to, I think part two, I'm going to have to get out another Vic. Well, I'm going to have to get out a Vic 20. Um, so let me just move the camera. So, um, because yeah, this is a Vic 1001 with the, oh, sorry, come on, focus, with the Katakana keyboard. So, yeah, all right, that was, oh, why are you going blurry? There we go. First attempt. So, I, I still don't know if it works. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have to do a bit more setting up if I'm gonna connect it to something. Um, yeah. All right. That was all.